we are working on section 1.1.2. We had created a virtual raster. This is useful where you want to work with a bunch of tiles as a single tile, and you don't want to consume this space. This is great for working on your own system. But what if you want to send this data to somebody? You say, I actually want to merge those files into a larger file and send them. So we learn how to now take this virtual raster, convert it to an actual GeoTIFF file that you can share. We're going to learn about the other command, GDAR translate. We're going to go to the GDAR documentation and we're going to look at the next command, GDAR translate. This is one of the main command that comes with the GDAR utilities. This is a conversion utility and you can see from the documentation, it has got a lot of features. Again, the way to read these commands is GDAR translate, blah, 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 source data set. Right? All of this you can ignore. So you can say GDA translate source destination. So we can say a source file, a destination file, and you can get conversion between those. When you run this, it will ask you what the format that you want. So there's an OF command, output format, starting with GDA 2.3 version. If not specified, the format is guessed from the extension. So you don't need to specify the format. You can say dot tiff and say, oh, I think you want a GeoTIF file. So it'll just create a GeoTIF file. If you say dot jp2, say I'll create a jp2 file, right? So you don't need to specify the format. If there's a confusion, say there are two formats which have the same extension, you can specify the format name here. But for now, we can just ignore that and say, let's convert this file. We have the vrt file here, merge.vrt. I want to convert it to a geotiff file. So I can use this GDAL translate command. So we'll say GDAL translate input and output. That's all we need to give. We can say merged.vrt merge.tiff. So from the documentation, it says you need to specify source dataset first and the destination dataset first. So we have the merge.prt, merge.tiff, and let's run this. And you can see it says um, there's a progress bar and it, it was done. It created my output file. Let's check our directory. If I come to the directory, you can see now I have this merge.tiff file which is here. And you can check the file size. This is actually 100 plus megabytes because we had four files of 25 megabytes. Once we merge those files, we get a 100 megabyte file. And this is a full GeoTIFF that you can share with other people. If you want to be more specific, we can say, I want to specify my output format. And I can say GTIFF. This is the name of the format. So I can run it like that as well. In your GDAL translate command, we can also do dash dash formats. Dash dash formats will tell you all the formats that GDAL can read. So if I do this, it will just give me this whole list of formats that GDAL supports. Some of them you may have worked with, some of them would be completely new to you because there are so many esoteric formats that Geospatial World has. But again, if you want to say, I want to convert it to a PNG file, the first, this, the first column here in the output shows the short name. So if I want a PNG output, I can say dash OF, PNG, if I want to specify the short name, or I can just say dot PNG and it'll guess the format correctly. So if you're not sure, use the dash dash formats to check what formats are supported. Otherwise, just use the extension and I will guess and use the correct format. Sometimes it's helpful to use the GDAL that comes with QGIS, specifically for things like the default GDAL install that you do has only support for open source formats. If you install QGIS, it has support for other proprietary formats, such as Mr. Sid, MR Sid format, so if you want to read MRSID, you can use the GDAL that comes with QGIS. And that means you can set the path to say, I want to use the GDAL from my QGIS environment. And all the scripts and all the tools will be run from that environment. We have instructions on how to do this in your course materials. If you go to your GDAL course here, here we have this section checks formats and capabilities. Here we have some documentation on how to use the, the QGIS version of GDAL if you want to use that. 